Oh boy, some flat earth believers are dumb. Uh, this video is about a comment received on a video of mine entitled The Turbine Challenge Part 2. Uh, this was a series of three very short videos uh, just asking the question basically why can't we see the bottom of these wind turbines and then explaining why we can't see the bottom of these wind turbines. So a YouTube channel called Peter and Pete have posted a comment. Now Peter and Pete I actually find quite amusing uh, but they actually seem to be deadly serious uh, not just trying to be humorous. They post a lot of nonsense about science on their YouTube channel. They do this kind of uh, double act, um, sort of comedy double act almost, but uh, they do really seem to believe of what they say. So let's have a look at their comment and, uh, well, you make up your own mind. Hello and a very warm welcome to you. Uh, so here is the Turbine Challenge Part 2 video and here is the comment from Peter and Pete. Um, they start by saying they haven't played the entire video. Uh, it's not a very long video so why not? Uh, I'll not read the whole of their comment. Uh, you can pause the video if you want to read it and uh, I'll scroll down so you can see all of it. Now, they haven't really understood the nature of the challenge. They think that I'm showing turbines uh, over a water horizon, whereas if you look at the series of three videos, you'll see exactly what those turbines were and why we can't see the bottom of them. But I also show some other turbines that are uh, uh, offshore and uh, can't see the bottom of those either for a very similar reason. But anyway, um, I'm not sure which of Peter and Pete is actually posting this comment, but they um, they say that they did a diagram. He says years ago. I'm not sure that's quite true. Looks like nine months ago to me. And says that this is their explanation for why things disappear from the bottom up when we're looking out at uh, things in the distance over water. So let's have a little look at their diagram and see what it's all about. So I've copied Peter and Pete's diagram and I've blocked out a couple of parts of it because, well, there's just so much wrong here. I want to deal with it a part at a time. So they've got an observer standing on a flat surface and they've indicated that observer's eye level with a red line. So, so far, observer, black line, red line, no problem. Unfortunately, they've now confused matters by trying to introduce a perspective view into what was a side-on view. So the observer's uh, actual observation of the ships, or perhaps one ship sailing away from them, will correctly is correctly shown as uh, the ships getting smaller uh, in angular size as they get further away from the observer. And yes, indeed, the water will appear to rise up in the observer's uh, field of view. Um, but it, these uh, red and, and black lines are just confusing because they're showing a side-on view. Now, Peter and Pete then claim that at the point where the water appears to meet the observer's eye level is 
the waterfront line or visible horizon as they call it. Now on a, a flat surface, this would be true, uh, but this would occur at uh, effectively at an infinite distance from the observer. It wouldn't occur uh, over a, a short distance. And the observer's eye's ability to resolve objects as they get closer to this, this point uh, can obviously be uh, improved by the use of uh, binoculars or a camera with a powerful zoom or a telescope. But up to this point, I can sort of see what Peter and Pete are trying to indicate. Ship sailing away into the distance, gradually getting smaller and smaller, and eventually that ship will, will disappear completely because it simply gets smaller as it approaches infinity here. Uh, even a powerful telescope uh, will not be able to bring it back into view. However, Peter and Pete then apply what uh, I guess they think is the coup de grace, uh, but is just utterly absurd. They add this freighter kind of vessel here. And now they want us to consider this perspective view as a side on view again, as if the observer is looking past this horizon, which is occurring at around infinity, remember, uh, to see only the top portion of uh, this freighter, which for some reason is miraculously placed on the black line of the flat side on surface view, rather than on the green line, which is the observer's uh, sort of um, view of the water uh, rising up in their field of view. I don't think I can put into words just how utterly absurd, incorrect and ridiculous this diagram is. So I thought I'd share it with you all so you can all have uh, a good laugh at it as well. So that was uh, Peter and Pete's little diagram attempt to explain uh, why we don't see the bottom of these wind turbines. Of course, if they'd actually bothered to watch the other video in the series, the final one, the third one, they would have seen that this uh, is actually a hill. And the reason we don't see these turbines is because that solid piece of land is in the way. It's got nothing to do with perspective or um, horizons. It's simply that there is something in the way. And of course, the same thing applies when we look at wind turbines out over the ocean. E the water gets in the way. And the only way that the water can get in the way is of course, if the earth is spherical. Now I did invite uh, Peter and Pete to, uh, to look at the other, um, videos in that little series and to look at my latest video in which I uh, present three uh, observations that are completely impossible on a flat earth. They declined to, uh, to do so, uh, calling it a petty little online quarrel with people who just offer their opinions. Well, I'm not offering an opinion I'm offering three observations that are impossible on a flat earth. So I'll invite Peter and Pete to actually watch uh, this video, even though it was initially directed at uh, somebody else, and ask them if they can offer any explanation for the observations presented. 